The Gifted Season 1 Episode 3 Thoughts. This episode is called Exodus. Another episode I love. Spoilers for everything, every X-Men live action movie and show leading up to and including this episode. Uh, yeah, shows rated TV 14, so will this video be? Back pain, gonna speedrun this. So yeah, we opened three years ago, and yeah, basically Lorna and Marcos talk about, you know, maybe taking pride in your minority identity, and that is something, you know, a lot of the happiest people that I've ever encountered online have been trans people who are 100% comfortable with their you know identity as trans people and who've had access to trans affirming healthcare you know just massive smiles on their faces beaming with joy their their voices like overflow just so happy and yeah you know did not expect that to come from Lorna Dane but you know given she's felt a little emo up to you know in in episodes before this one but yeah i mean maybe something happened over those 3 years to to change that and yeah the you know there is beauty in minority identity you know members of minorities can do things that we in the majority could never even dream of and i really appreciate that this explores the the beauty of it because like as much as i love the pew 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 you know mutant powers versus other mutant powers kind of stuff in in you know x-men media a lot of the most important stuff is this you know empowering in a different way and you know it, it is legitimately very cool when when she's floating and and yeah she kind of you know brings out the you know they already both know that he's a mutant or trans but he's like feeling bad about it and she makes him feel good about it it's no wonder that they love each other and yeah the the aurora borealis thing legitimately is beautiful and i appreciate that they straight up you know they they don't say oh that that looks kind of nice that if i recall they they specifically use the word beauty and let's see yeah, Jace tries to pressure Lorna into giving up information. Good scene. And and yeah, um Kate still believes that, you know, some somehow you can work within the system and you know, she wants to to contact and I appreciate that over the course of the episode like yeah, you know, there are times where it seems like oh, this will never work. And, you know, by the very end, he, you know, Uncle Danny has, you know, he is, he does want things to, to work out. And, you know, great scene with the, the Monopoly thing about, you know, first they're, they're making jokes about how bad the, of a state it's in. And, and this thing of, you know, it doesn't matter, I'm, I'm going to beat you anyway. And he's like, yeah, like last time, no, last time was your birthday. I let you win. You know, and we have this thing of, you know, he wants to, let's see. Um, he wants to use the, yeah, he wants to play as the, the shoe. And she says, you know, you can't be the shoe. Dad's always the shoe, you know. And let's see. Yeah, I, I quite like the, the detail that, the you know, while their mutant powers can be triggered by negative emotions, positive emotions is how to go about controlling them. And that's, again, you know, for, for years I heard about gender dysphoria, which is a very real problem, but only recently did I hear about gender euphoria, you know, the, the joy, as mentioned earlier, that, yeah, a number of trans people feel when the yeah when they're able to live the their truth cell true selves and let's see yeah and we see Reed indeed give Jace some of the information and yeah very very good scene when when 
John is training uh, Clarice and yeah you know you start small and you you gradually and and again you know if we're talking like trans allegory this reminds me of like the the you know a lot of the um let's see the the recommended way to start is to start small to start with you know social transitioning going by the gender pronouns that you feel are right for you and you know that that sort of thing so this is reminiscent of that and yeah um andy suggests robbing a bank so yeah he's he's still not really the the emotional turmoil is is getting to him I, I kind of like the, you know, um, when when Dreamer or Sage is trying to, you know, get, trying to help Clarice, you know, there's that thing about, you know, if you, if you focus on some, someone you really care about, that can be a way to better use, you know, to, yeah, to use your, to, to control your, your powers. And, you know, she asks, you know, is there a boyfriend? Maybe a girlfriend, you know. And it's just treated as, as natural because it is. There's nothing wrong with, you know, being attracted to someone. Yeah, so that was, I quite appreciated that. And, yeah, um, Clarice points out, you know, I, I can tell that you, you know, you and, and John together you're the only one who calls him Johnny and the way that you look at each other and, and this thing and and yeah you know John and Dreamer used to be together but now they're not because they put the the cause ahead of them you know very like yeah really big sacrifice and yeah you know the the memory that Dreamer uses later in the episode to motivate Clarice is in fact a memory of Dreamer and, and John together, and and this is you know it's this kind of Philip K. Dick thing of you are who your memories tell you who you are, which I think there's a lot of truth to. So very nicely done, because you know at the end of the day, how you feel about someone, especially, is based on memories of that person. And let's see. And I really look forward to, you know, they, they, there's a couple of mentions, you know, when, yeah, when Dreamer is like saying, you know, maybe I could do this, you know, John is like, no, remember what, ha let's see, what happened to Walker, to Eve, and, you know, we, the audience, don't know yet, but clearly, yeah, Dreamer and, and John both do, and, and, yeah, by the end of the episode, he's like, you know, you know what this might cause, you know, kind of thing, very ominous, and let's see... Yeah, um, Scott annoys Danny so much that Danny's like, you know what, go play video games. I'm going to order a pizza, you can stay up late, you know, just please stop trying to, to, cause, cause, you know, Scott keeps asking questions about the, the mutant stuff. He thinks it's super cool, which is very teenage boy, like, just, wow, yeah. I've I've been there. I've I've definitely not taken something seriously that I just thought was a kind of cool. And let's see. Yeah, for the time being, Danny does not do a lot to, to help Kate and her family. I also quite like the thing, you know, yeah. Once you know, she wakes them up because she doesn't want them to just wake up and be like where's mom did she abandon us you know she that's a it's a parent thing you don't want your kids to to you know it's a good parent if you're a good parent you don't want your kids to feel any unnecessary you know negative emotions but yeah they're gonna be you know they're, they're teenagers so they're like no we're going with you and let's see and jace points out apparently someone did lose a foot or to, you know get rid of their foot to, to to get rid of the tracker like holy crap 
And, and yeah, we see the, the bartender is indeed a mutant. He can turn invisible, and he gets out a gun and, and changes the, the position to change the, the dynamic of power. And, and Reed does indeed sell it, you know. If you're not going to help me pull the trigger, you'd be doing me a favor. Like, yeah, that's pretty convincing. And, um, okay, so I'm not sure how you pronounce Sh Sheila or Sh Shilia. Um, you know, she can't, she can't heal, but she can take away pain. That, you know... She was apparently also on, on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, right, right. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I know. Uh, is that a spoiler? I, I think I do recognize. Yeah, anyway. Um, let's see. Yeah, and, and there's a thing, you know, the, 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 yeah, Sentinel Services, the SS, are going after this little girl who hasn't, done anything who you know yeah but you know she might be a future threat and this is again you know like people from minority I suppose this I'm not I don't know if off the uh, it doesn't offhand remind me of something trans if if I'm mistaken please correct me in the comments but it does make me think of how you know African Americans you know cops will shoot them and be like oh you know I just saw this beast coming at me I'm just so relieved that you shot a kid you know and the the you know they're always saying oh you know he looked much older than than you know so yeah and you know purely because of their minority identity you know, a lot of cops see black skin and immediately assume they're they're dangerous, even when they're literally children. And see, yeah, uh, Scott keeps trying to get Andy to use his powers and does ultimately get him to, you know, and and yeah, Lauren covers for them. You know, oh, they're just going all WWE on each other, which yeah, you know. Um, once again, I was a teenage boy. Yeah, um, there were there were definitely times where just yeah. So so yeah, Kate is like ah, yet again, you know this is this again. She doesn't even feel the need to like tell him don't do that. You know you're this isn't even your house. You can't, Andy. You can't do this. But yeah, and let's see then we have the. Right, it was also a, a nice moment that, that, you know, Reed, you know, the bartender's like, here's dinner, and it's this, like, it's, it's a small bag of chips or something like that, you know, it's it's nothing. And, you know, he sees, you know, Sheila, and he's like, you want some? You know, this, that's a legitimately nice, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, and, and Reed does regret helping Sentinel Services. You know, the, the kid really melts his heart as she did ours. And, yeah, you know, first he says, you gotta stop the car and, then, you know, when it becomes clear that the bartender is not gonna stop the car, he, like, opens it and jumps out and rolls down. I didn't kill my wife. And, let's see... Yeah, and, and retell, you know, you can shove that deal right up your ass or something like that. Just And, yeah, Lorna does manage to open the door, but collapses right outside. And, you know, it's, it's really getting to her. She really has to get out of there. <laughs> I like the... So, so, yeah, Kate was, like, you know, sleeping on the couch, and she's, she's got, like, a knife just in case. And, and yeah, Marcos and, and John show up, and she's, like, waving it around, just, yeah. And, and they're, like, could you put down the knife? And, and then, you know, Danny starts waving it around. That was, yeah. And, 
yeah, you know, Danny talks about, you know, oh, these these mutants, and, and, you know, Kate's like, the only mutants I took into your home were your niece and your nephew, you know, so suddenly they're just mutants, they're, they're not family. And, and yeah, Scott texted the, the, because he thought it was cool, you know, it's like, oh, look at the, the, you know, the, the trophy got like split, like, oh, that's so cool, you know, and it just didn't think about, wow, and, and yeah, the, the, you know, now there's a modern day lynch mob right outside, and I like the, you know, so, so Andy's like, we can fight them off, and, and John's like, I, yeah, I believe it's John, I don't think it's Marcus. Of course we can, <laughs> but people might get hurt. You know, it's like I I love that kind of confidence, and yeah. Um, uh, Danny tries to reason with them, and it's just not happening. One of them slugs him. Andy destroys the door, but John manages to or Mar Marcos. You know, makes the the gun insanely hot. Again, getting Magneto vibes, and yeah, they manage to to get to the cars. But it of course leads to a car chase because everybody w went there in their cars. I suppose it's because they don't want they they thought it might be more trouble. But I, other than that, yeah, and I guess they want to get out of there really fast. I mean. Marcos could maybe melt a tire or something. Although, but then, yeah, there's several cars, and there's so many. Yeah, it makes sense that they just go for the car and, and drive. And yeah, Sage, despite the, the warning, does use her power on Clarice. And... Let's see. Yeah, and, and you know, she does manage to, to open the portal... They all go through, and and yeah, you know, John can tell there's something weird going on here, and he said, you know, you know what this could lead to, and also this kind of awkward because Clarice, you know, Clarice is hugging John like they used to kiss in the rain, and John is like, hey, you, <laughs> because you know he knows who he, who she is. But they don't have that kind of relationship, so th yeah, you know that's, and that's also you know I, f I feel like if this movie had been if uh, if this had been a movie made in the eighties or even nineties, you know he would have been like oh sweet I'm gonna score you know but no that's not that's that's not an emotionally healthy way to react to that, and let's see. You know, and, and men do have emotional needs as well. That gets us to... Yeah, yeah, and and Dr. Campbell calls Jace and suggests a partnership, and Jace says no and hangs up. I do not think this is the last we're going to see. I don't know if Campbell will eventually talk him into it or if he's going to start doing his own thing in instead, but... Yeah, that's, yeah, really looking forward to, to more, always want more Garrett Dillahunt. I am, my thirst cannot be quenched. And, yeah, you know, Danny did make some calls, got some information, and, yeah, you know, great. We have this shot where, where Kate goes to the, you know, to, to Marcos and John, rather than, you know, yeah, that that was not what Danny was was thinking. Should yeah, and let's see, yeah, um, IMDb trivia for this episode. So yeah, one person pointed out, you know, Aaron Way who portrayed Sheila was on Agents of Shield, and Jeff Phillips also. Uh, oh right, right, yeah. Uh, uh, Tex, the the bartender, was also on Agents of Shield, and and yeah, someone pointed out the Aurora Borealis described by Polaris is seen around the North Pole. There's an equivalent with the South Pole called the Aurora Australis. 
Whoops. Um, so yeah, a uh, goof. Re revealing mistake. When the kids are playing a video game, both PS4 controllers are clearly turned off. There is no option to turn off the light bar when playing a PS4 game. Yeah, that's a... You know, because, cause like, if they're actually playing, that's not going to work as well for... They're, they're, you know, they're trying to shoot a, a scene. It's, you know, it's, it's like how cups are often empty. You know, it's just easier to, to deal with. But, yeah, um, let's see. I think that might be about what I have to say. So, I will try to do another episode tomorrow. If not, the next one will be Wednesday. And, let's see... Yeah, I like the detail that John knows. That's impossible. My head can't be ripped off. <laughs>